the Premier League is starting on Friday. So I think it's about time I do a Premier League table prediction. Now, I'm not going to make this like a half an hour video or something. I'm going to try to do this as quickly as possible, uh, not to waste anyone's time. And this is actually the first time I'm doing a, a predictions on a, on a league table. But what I will say, the last time I predicted something was France win the World Cup. And I won lots of money off my friends. So that's what I'm saying. <laughs> but I know this is going to be no joke. This will be really difficult. So let's let's get on to it. We're going to start on 20th. And Bournemouth. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. They've just, they've just come up. But they are going to be in that 20th spot for me. Now the transfer business they have done. They've brought in Marcus Tavernier. Um, obviously James Tavernier's brother. He's a, he's a good player. I've seen him play against United. And they've also brought in Ryan Fredericks uh, and another guy, uh, Joe, on a free transfer. I just don't think it's enough. I think they've got some good deals in, but it's it's nowhere near the level of making a championship team into uh, a Premier League level team. Now, again, another team that has just gotten up is Fulham. They are going to be 19th for me. Now, Fulham have actually been very good on the transfer window. They've signed uh, Leno from Arsenal uh, in Babu. They've gotten um, Sesson Young to renew his contract. Uh, Andres Pereira from Man United. Joao Paulinha. Uh, Obviously, he's played for Portuguese national team. So they have gotten some good deals, but... The, Again, is it enough to make a championship team into that Premier League team? And I just don't know. I think Fulham will play some good football this season. It's just can they can they turn that football into points? We will find out. And the last team that I believe is going to get relegated is not a not Nottingham Forest, not a team that has just come up. It is Leeds. United now listen Leeds United have lost Calvin Phillips they have lost what I think is a massive loss is Rafinha and he was the reason why Leeds United stayed up last season Rafinha was the reason they they stayed up because he got them the goals he got them assists I just don't know where um, Leeds United are going to get the uh, these goals and assists from I mean you're looking at the attack, Jack Harrison, Bamford, he struggled with injury. Daniel James, he's just not consistent enough. And I just don't think Leeds um, have um, have the strength this season to stay up. And as well as, I think, Lu I think um, Bielsa leaving was, was just, just the wrong decision uh, from a Leeds point of view. I think they needed him to stay. I don't think Jesse Marsh... Um, really impressed last season. Uh, I noticed the the football they were playing. Um, it, it you can see the, a massive difference. Now they are positives. Obviously, they have brought in Tyler Adams. He's played for Abilities. He's played at a high level. He knows what he's doing. And they've also brought in um Lewis Sinistera, I believe that's how you pronounce it, from Fenwood for about twenty five million euros. And he um, obviously made it to the Conference League final. So it's it's about the new signings. If he can kick on, uh, then he, he, Leeds United could have a, a chance of staying up. Now, team for 17th place I have is Everton. Reason being, we've, we've seen last season how close Everton was. Um, to relegation they got really close and it, i don't think it's going to be any easier this season um we know that uh everton are closing in on a deal for Udrisha gonna go to return to the club um <clears throat> uh james tagowski on a free transfer i think is a brilliant deal we obviously they've lost richarlison and a deal that i really like from everton and that's what I'm edging them to to stay up above Leeds United is Dwight McNeil from Burnley. Is 
I've always wanted to see this guy at at a decent club because I I thought that from a Burnley team that were that played so negative, shall, shall I say, he was just such a bright spark, such a a brilliant footballer, and um, I'm excited to see him in Everton. And I think that uh, Tegowski, Dwight McNeil are going to be the reason why Everton stay up. Sixteenth place. I am going to be putting Nottingham Forest. And I think they could possibly even get maybe high, maybe a 15th place. We'll discuss that now because I think Nottingham Forest have had a, a magnificent window. And the reason why, uh, when I was talking about the two newly promoted teams in Fulham and Bournemouth, I was saying, yes, I like these soundings, I like these plays. But what this is what I mean. I believe it was not enough. When you look at Nottingham Forest signing, they've got Nico Williams from Liverpool. They've got um, Aurel Mangala um, from uh, the Stuttgart. They've got Jesse Lingard on the free transfer. They've got Lewis O'Brien. They've got Harry um, to, to follow. They have um, Omar Richards from Bayern Munich. They have Mia Kate, um from Mainz, obviously playing in the Bundesliga. They've, they've also got Dean Henderson. Um, from Manchester United, and they have much, much more deals. They have some contract extensions, and I think they've had a brilliant window. They've brought in players that have played at a high level with Dean Henderson and Lingard and Nico Williams playing for level. I think that Nottingham Forest will survive this season, and I think that they played, they played good football in the Championship. They just need to translate some of some of those ideas. They've definitely improved their, their overall squad massively compared to the to the other two championship teams. And for me, Nottingham Forest will be staying up. In fifteenth place, I am going to be putting Southampton. Now they've not been that active in the window, but they're still looking at deals. We see um Delap from um Man City, they look like interested. They they're mostly going for these these young players, and I think um, I just think Southampton's overall um, strategy in the market is always good, and I think that they 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 will they're safe at fifteen spot. Uh, I don't see them being out under much uh, threat, as especially with James Ward Browse and Che Adams. I think that team um, has a decent enough spine. Uh, to to be 15th in the Premier League. Now, 14th place. I'm going to scroll up on this table and get Brentford to go down in 14th place. The reason I have Brentford in the 14th place, I don't think it's going to be an easy season for Brentford um, compared to last season. Obviously, Christian Eriksen was a massive help. Uh, losing him is going to be difficult, but they're replacing him with a with another Denmark international in Damsgaard, and I think it will be enough for them to easily avoid relegation and secure 14th place. I think that um, I just think the way Brentford plays, um, it's it's always going to get them points. Now for 13th place, this could be very controversial, but the team that I have for 13th place are already sitting there. That's Wolverhampton now. Wolves have had very good seasons in the Premier League, and this is the lowest I think um, I've ever predicted them being. And it's thirteenth place for me, and you'll see why when I'm when I compare them to the teams above. I just think um, last season they were just giving so many chances away, and they had to heavily rely on Jose Saw. They also found it difficult. Um, um, they found it difficult to get goals um, for a period of time um, with Raul Jimenez. They, br they brought in uh, a striker, obviously Fabio Silva. Um, he's now out and loan. So it's, it's, I think it's, it's, I don't think they, they're going to face any difficulty in terms of relegation or anything. I think they'll have like an average season and secure 13th spot. For 12th place, I have Patrick Vieira's Crystal Palace. Now, Palace do have a very young team, so um, it's it will be hard for them to stay consistent. But I think they just play brilliant foot uh, football, and I think they have good players. 
um, Crystal Palace. I think it's been a, a frustrating window for Crystal Palace as well as also losing um, Conor Gallagher. I thought I thought that uh, they could have got that um, on the line, but uh, obviously they've got Decore in from Lens. They've got Sam Johnston on a free. Um, it's it's looking it's looking decent um, for for Crystal Palace. They also signed uh, Chris Richards from Bayern Munich. It it's it's very young players. It's it's uh, fitting into the profile in, of what Patrick Vieira is building, and I think they will get twelfth place this season, eleventh place. I I just I know the a lot of decisions that I, I'm even looking at, and I think. They are definitely going to be controversial. But the team that I have is Aston Villa for 11th place. I just, um, I'm not sure about the window so far. I mean, they've, got, they've obviously got, um, signed Coutinho. They got uh, Bubakar Kamara from Marseille. I think it's a good signing. Um, it's it's been a decent window um, for Aston Villa, but I just think that there's so many teams. Um, as you can look at the teams or or head there, it's not in the order, but just like West Ham, Spurs, Newcastle, I just think they've all just done more for Aston Villa, and I don't see Aston Villa getting um a a top half finish this season. Now in tenth place, I have um. A, a team that I initially had in mind, but just because of how the market is going, um, I have had to put them 10th, and that is Brighton. Obviously, they, they're they losing a kicker, Rella, so it will depend to see what Brighton do in the remaining um, uh, stages of um, the transfer window, but at the moment, I think Brighton will be 10th. Brighton played brilliant football on the ground, Potter, every season. I don't think um, uh, they'll struggle to get a, a top a, um, half finish. I think that's that's where Brighton's levels at at the moment, and they still have a very good squad. Obviously, um, with losing Cucurella, um, I'm not sure about the the deals that, that are coming in. Also, they lost Bissouma to Spurs, um, but I I think uh, that Brighton have had to do more on the window. I don't think they've backed uh, Graham Potter particularly well. In ninth place, I have a team that was struggling for relegation last season, and that is Newcastle United. Now, obviously, Newcastle have um, had a good window so far. They brought in Sven Botman, uh, Matt Target. Um, they've also been making some some bids to. Uh, to Leicester for James Madison, they brought in Nick Pope. So they've had a very active window uh, as expected from Newcastle, and I'm still expecting more signings. But Eddie Howe, what I, what I really like is towards the end of the season, Eddie Howe got them playing good um, good football. He got them playing, and I think with the team they have already with St. Maximum and the way Joe Linton was performing, John Joe Shelby himself um, adding... Uh, a player like Sven Botman in the back line, I think it's a good spine uh, with a good manager, and I see Newcastle securing ninth place. The team I have for eighth place is Leicester City. Now, I don't think Leicester have been doing particularly well in the market. Obviously, they've lost Casper uh, Schmeichel. But I think it's going to be another difficult season for them in, in eighth place. And um, let's see what happens with James Madison. They could lose him to Newcastle. I think something something like that. I think um, you could easily uh, put Leicester at ninth and Newcastle in eighth position. And the team for seventh position are already sitting there. And that is West Ham United. West Ham have had... Um, a good window. They brought in a uh, Skamaka. I really, really liked that signing. Obviously, and Antonio is not getting any younger, so I think they needed to bring in a striker. Um, Ariola was confirmed, and they've also been interested in the likes of um, Dan Juma. 
but that deal didn't go through. So let's see what West Ham do in the remaining window. And uh, we, we know David Moyes has built a great squad there at West Ham. And I think that they they can easily get seventh and even compete for that sixth spot. And in sixth place, I have my team, the team I support, it's Manchester United. Um, listen, I've watched all the preseason games, but I'm not like um, all these United fans. I'm not overly excited by the football um, uh, that we're playing. We are playing good football, don't get me wrong. But I, I, I just don't think the quality of the players is there. I don't have quite the belief in Martial. I, I think Rashford has, has improved, but I still don't think he's at a good level for this United team. And looking at our signings we brought in, we brought in Christian Eriksen, who is a free transfer, Tarbel Malastio. We signed for 15 million. That That's basically covered by, by our sales so far. And Lissandro Martinez, who was our second choice uh, centre-back from Ajax, which I'm, I'm very happy. Don't get me wrong. I'm very happy with these three players. I think they can turn out to be great signings. But from a United team that struggled last season, um, listen, it's not enough. And I I I think it I, I can argue this with anyone. I genuinely believe that last season we had a better team than going into this season. And last season we were shit. Our team was shit. So listen, United have have to get active in this transfer window. They've um uh, they've have they have to get a midfielder in and another attacker because our options are looking thin. We have Sancho, Marshall, and Rashford. Um, two of two of the three there. We don't even know how they're gonna p- perform. Sancho is the only one who who I'm fairly confident in, and we don't even know if Ronaldo is staying. He's our only other option in attack. We have no squad depth, and the quality of players starting is questionable. So listen, I wouldn't. I would not be surprised if United got seventh place this season. I would not be surprised, and I don't even think it's Ten Hag's fault. It's just. It's just very poor business from Manchester United. I just let's let's move on, man. It's just I'm breaking my heart talking about them. Now, in fifth place, this is obviously where it gets juicy. The top five in the Premier League table. Now, listen, <sighs> Arsenal. I have got you all in fifth. Place. I'm sorry, I know Arsenal fans have been Felix. Uh, listen, I think Arsenal have done fantastic business. Gabriel Jesus, I think, is going to be probably the most influential signing for a team. I think he's going to make the most impact as a signing for his team. And I think they've done great business with Jesus, Fabio Vieira and um, Zinchenko. But I just think the top four... I just they're just on another level. I think Arsenal could could sneak into that top four. Um, it will depend um on on what what happens with the remaining of uh window and how Arsenal perform going into the season. But for me, I think Arsenal will get fifth, and I think I think it'll be a comfortable fifth. I think it doesn't matter who is sixth, whether it's United or West Ham. I think they will comfortably f- be fifth and. Be closer to that that fourth spot than they will be to six. In fourth place, I have Chelsea. Now listen, I initially did have Chelsea in third, but it's it's all gonna depend on what happens for the remaining window from Chelsea. Um, because I still do think they need to improve the defense, but. So far, the signings have been good. Raheem Sterling, I think, is is a brilliant signing. Uh, Koulibaly, a brilliant defender. They are closing in in Kikurella, obviously. And some breaking news from David Ornstein. They are interested in Frankie de Jong. So, listen. Let's see what Chelsea do for the remaining window. But um, even if they go into the season with what they have, which is very unlikely, I still do think they'll get top four because I think Thomas Tuchel uh, too is just such a good manager. But that fourth, fourth and fifth place, I think, will be heavy competition between Chelsea and Arsenal. In third place, I have Spurs. I think, listen, I think they've done brilliant 
in the transfer window. I think bring in Busuma, bring in um, Perisic, Lenglet, and especially Richarlison because Richarlison is going to provide that competition to their front three of Kulisevsky, Harry Kane, and Hyunmi Son. Some much needed competition, and I think they brought in a player with the right mentality, a player with that type of attitude that he feels he's better than our front three. So I think it's a brilliant signing. And for me, I think Spurs are going to get third spot. Now, again, with with Spurs, I don't think they're going to be close to, to Liverpool and Man City. I think they'll be closer to Chelsea than they are to the top two. But for me, Spurs will get that third spot. Now... Liverpool and Man City, who do I think is going to win the Premier League? Listen, yet again, I do believe it will be Manchester City. And I'll give you the reason why. It's because Manchester City's squad depth is just unbelievable. You compare to Liverpool, the the squad depth, the difference in the squad depth um, is just is just something that I think always favors City, and in the long run, on that, um, in during the the course of the Premier League season, it just is just such a big advantage for Manchester City having that squad depth, having let's say Bernardo Silva can't can't be fit, then Ilkay Gundogan comes in. I mean, the there's the difference in quality is not there for Man City. They have quality players all around. And Pep Guardiola has been dominant in the Premier League for so many seasons. And in addition to that, they've brought in Erling Haaland. I think Man City will secure the Premier League once again. Liverpool on second place. I think it will be close again. But ultimately, I do think Manchester City will come out on top. So, yes, ladies and gentlemen, that is my Premier League predictions. Manchester City to win the Premier League, and we've got Liverpool in second place. That is my Premier League predictions. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think of my predictions and what you agree with, what you disagree. I would be very happy if I could get, let's, at the end of the season, let's just say seven, seven right, yeah? Um, so yeah, consider subscribing and I will see you guys next time.